Six and a half billion people, six and a half billion stomachs. The land that feeds us sprawls into the wilderness. As our population hurdles upward, we will continue sacrificing forests for farmland. Space-saving farms, farms built upward, are one man's solution. Dixon de Pamier, a public health professor at Columbia University, has an intricate vision backed by a broad body of science. His plan, which is still on paper, marshals the knowledge of an array of experts to build the urban farms of the future. The more I looked into this problem, the more I became aware that farming outdoors has created huge problems that are not solvable by the fact that the human population continues to increase every day until finally in another 50 years from now there'll be another three billion mouths to feed and if farming isn't working now you can imagine what it's not going to be like in 50 years from now so the problem in my view would be maybe five stories tall that's a um, prototypical version uh, it would be in my view also totally transparent to allowing as much uh, passive energy through solar radiation as you could possibly get and uh, those five floors would be devoted to a series of crops which everyone agrees that this farm, if located in this particular area of New York or Paris or London or Shanghai, uh, should produce food that most people would consume. The project has taken a life of its own, expressing itself through students and professionals into myriad and artistic architectural renderings and multi-pronged energy, farming, and recycling solutions. That's how I imagine the first prototype to look. And so what you can then see, it's a double-pane glass structure which insulates it and allows you to uh, regulate uh, all of the environmental conditions that you need in order to grow plants. In spite of the glow around the utopian artist's concepts, De Pommier prefers to anchor his idea in technologies that we already use. The main hurdle he has to clear is not technology, he says, but funding. We know how to grow food inside. That's not the problem. What we don't know yet is how to integrate that technology into a tall building. That appears to be a simple but perhaps expensive engineering problem. The farms would also recycle waste and generate energy. Waste like the husks and stalks of spent plants from the farms and sewage from the cities they feed would be processed naturally, detoxified in pools of inedible plants. Nutrients would be extracted for fertilizers and the rest burned for electricity. The process de Pommier foresees would be a high-tech one called plasma gasification. He explains. It's, a, it's akin to imagining yourself sitting on the surface of the sun. Now, you're probably going to last for a femtosecond. That's a very, very small amount of time, by the way. <laughs> and, the, and what would happen to you after that is that you would break up into your component elements. You wouldn't even remain as compounds. You would go back to sodium and hydrogen and lithium and beryllium and oxygen and iron and all the other things that the body is made up of. Well, we can imitate that condition inside of a, of a closed chamber by using a very, very high electrical current. Where does the electricity come from? From some of the energy that you're burning. To get Hydroponic farming and sterile, hospital-like indoor farms slashes the need for pesticides and fertilizers. How would you farm without soil? You say, ah, thank you. Back in the 1930s, <laughs> someone asked that question. Gee, I wondered why when I dropped this avocado pit into my glass of water and came back a week later, the avocado pit had a big tap root and it had little stalks coming out of the top of it. And if I just keep adding water, you know what? I'm going to get a baby avocado tree. There's enough energy stored up in the seed of an avocado plant to hydroponically grow in pure water, no nutrients, just pure water, a miniature version of an avocado tree. It also eliminates the risk of contamination with soil parasites, since there is no soil, and parasites like salmonella. So why can't we take that idea and apply it to the crops that we really cherish, like wheat and corn and rice and rice? Did you say rice? There's another water plant. Gee whiz, this must work. For this pommier, Overhauling how we grow what we eat is urgent. And we choose to live in cities. We will live more and more in cities as time progresses. And if we don't learn how to do it soon, these will become horrible places. For every indoor acre you farm, you can save about five to 10 outdoor acres. Every time you do that, the trees grow back and they suck up more carbon. That gives somebody a chance 
It gives you a chance to catch up to the climate change issue. Vertical farming allows for the possibility of giving land back to what it used to be intended for, and that is to produce hardwood forest. The cost will be high, he says, but it will lower as vertical farms catch on. The cost of flat farming, however, is rolled up in the bill for global warming.